What's up, YouTube? Well, today I want to go through and touch on a lot of my trials and tribulations trying to get a belt drive on the Geo 704. I've tried multiple different belts, different pulleys, and uh, yeah, in this video I'm going to go through a little review of exactly how we got to the solution that I think is best. So, for one, just recall that uh, on this mill there are two different pieces to the spindle core. There's the actual spindle spline shaft itself and then there's something called the quill which when you're down here looking at the bottom of the case that can slide in and out of the casing the case housing and because I chose in my setup I did not want that quill I'll never use it uh, made this little block out piece of steel that sits over the stock uh, where the fine adjustment knob used to be and this bolt uh, pushes and compresses this cylinder which is just a friction fitting here that keeps the whole quill from being able to slide out of the body and uh, yeah it works really well holds it completely solid so um, that's important because when you check in the run out um, if we measure the the outside of this spindle nose is ground fairly decently from the factory and with factory bearings in here and that's another thing a lot of guys jump to the conclusion that you gotta swap out your bearings you know I'm of the opinion run them till they die if it's not working for you then do something about it so um, in this belt drive conversion I was shooting for about 4200 RPM and uh, with the stock motor by the way uh, we'll talk more about that in a little bit but yeah I, I've got less than a thou of run out just with the stock bearings but one thing that was an issue when designing a belt drive was how do you attach it to the top here and there's a couple different methods that people use one is to drive it from the spline shaft itself and the second way is to use these two three millimeter screws to hold down some type of pulley and index the outside ring attached to the spindle and there's advantages to both ways uh, but I think one thing that really bothered me was because if you look down the spindle shaft there is a lot of open space and basically that thing is a huge cantilever beam if you are if you put any kind of force from a fixed object it is gonna produce bending uh, so if you've got a belt pulling directly only on this spline well you're bending that spline shaft inside the quill which is, affects the run out of the spindle nose so if we take a look at this dial gauge and I'm gonna push on that spindle spline shaft look see that movement it, it adds about a thou of run out um, so uh, that led me to think you gotta stay away from touching that at all leave it be wherever it wants to float leave it alone and that's why this first idea did not work which here I tried using a L-style belt, which an L-style belt is one of these that has timing indexes. Uh, the advantage to this type of belt is that when it is indexed to a gear that has the same indentation of the belt, it, it's, it's almost impossible for the thing to slip. 
once it's engaged 180 degrees around the radius of your pulley. So yeah, I thought that would be the best way to start and it's a good start but boy was I wrong because first of all these things are expensive. Uh, this one's 3D printed but if you were to buy one of these from a McMaster car you're looking between 20 and 30 bucks uh, just for the pulley and not in this shape at all you'd have to do some milling and, and a whole bunch of uh, customization to the pulley just to get it to fit here and so yeah I thought uh, let's give this a go the idea here was to print this so that's this split fits around the spline shaft and it also snaps around this ring therefore you kept the spline from vibrating and it's perfectly aligned in the center and uh, you're concentric with the whole spindle which here when this snaps in place you'll see what I'm talking about but again fits around the spline so I can physically turn this right snaps down and there you go so this would be driven again by another 3d printed pulley on the motor in this type of fashion well it worked uh, for a while and then what started to happen was there was three set screws here in one-third the distance around uh, that way you can adjust these to get zero run out on the spindle by getting this spline shaft perfectly in the center of this pulley. But over time, those set screws, because of the plastic ABS, uh, they started, the plastic started to relax from the stress and eventually backed out. And when that happened, then this thing started to ride up and down and up and down and up and down. And when somebody is you know, noticing that happening, and then all of a sudden it, it pretty much failed. It completely exploded and uh, split right at this shear interface. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. If this thing is printed in nylon, it'd probably perform a little better. But um, also, this thing is noisy as hell because of these ribs. Uh, and the, the alignment's not perfect. So, that idea was out. Um, good attempt, but out. Second thing, I thought, alright, why don't we just go, uh, we use that same concept of using this outside index of this ring and go for a V-belt. Um, and also, don't even touch the spine shaft, leave it completely open so that way there's no influence on the runout by this being pulled and pushed. Another thing was this measured out to a little, uh, I think 1.771 uh, inches in outer diameter. Machine this inner indexing diameter of the pulley to be a couple thou less than that. That way, when this is pushed onto that ring, see, it, it, it's a considerable effort to get it down there. But now, there's some internal stress in this pulley that is pushing on that piece of steel that kind of, it, it based on the statics of the situation, it's going to find exactly the uh, concentric center point of this whole assembly. And, yeah, it being Delrin, it, it's, not, it's not aluminum, no, but I think the benefit of having this be a press fit and being able to find concentricity perfectly far outweighs trying to machine an aluminum pulley. And then on top of that, I had a washer, which is not being shown here, and then the, the snap ring that was stocked with the mill to hold this whole thing down. And that kind of worked. 
for a while. The biggest thing was I did use a similar pulley on the motor itself and under heavy cuts no matter what I did no how how much I pushed any kind of belt tensioner setup that I had it, it the belt would continuously slip um, and here it it burned into this pulley and, and pretty much melted um, not the pulley itself but actually the belt so much quieter definitely ran smoother but again not enough power transfer even for the stock motor at uh, at the highest torque uh, RPMs so that was out then all right we got some ideas flowing here we know we got to stay around away from the spindle shaft um, we know we need more torque transfer so the next option was um, like your car, a serpentine belt, or here they're actually called J-belts. And what's unique about a J-belt is um, it's a whole bunch of mini V-belts. And with that style of setup, each one of these faces is a different fang surface, which increases the amount of area that you're going to get on a pulley. Uh, not only that, but my machining skills are not perfect in the manual so that would mean that when these were cut on the lathe uh, these the spacing between these is not exactly perfect so that adds uh, a little bit of push and pull friction from these guys just trying to stay in that groove all the time all six aligned instead of just one V where one V taking a look at this it if it slips it slips but if you had a neighboring one if this tried to slip and move though well, it's going to add more force to that neighboring race and, and increase friction so that's the advantage of the j-belt yeah kept the same idea milled this out of delrin six grooves uh, there's definitely no tooling to make these grooves i had to manually cut it what i did was go to the grinder and Took a piece of uh, a cutoff blade, HSS, and physically ground it, ground in that angle that I needed for the J groove, and then uh, cut it on the lathe. So, yeah, that's how that was done. We kept the same style of inner diameter index which is slightly smaller than what's actually required on the mill. That way, when this is pressed down, again, it indexes perfectly concentric with the spindle. And rather than touching this spline shaft uh, and putting any kind of radial stress, vertical axial force that may mess, out, mess up your run out, decided to go ahead and use the two screws three millimeter that are on the mill um, from the initial RPM sensor that goes straight down that way when this is installed these screws will keep the pulley from raising up. And then because of the friction fit between the outside of our index ring and the pulley itself, that adds a little torque capacity that needs to be overcome before these screws are even engaged in shear. And everything I've read, even for people that have replaced their motors with three-phase, um, behemoths these have never sheared even on the, the most intense situations uh, it, it's worked for me so I, I haven't had any any issues yet and uh, yeah I think that's the way to go so once that was done again the J-belt boom powered on right here uh, on the motor itself, I went with an aluminum pulley. 
Same thing, cut with that same HSS tool on the lathe for the J-belt. Six grooves. This guy slides around here, slides around the upper pulley, and I am using a couple washer stacks with a nut to act as spacers. That way when this top plate is put on for the motor, the pulley of the motor exactly aligns up with the cuts in my spindle drive pulley. Something to note, I do not have the RPM sensor on here anymore. Uh, that's because because I'm controlling the stock motor with Linux CNC uh, and I, I've calculated the RPM curves. Uh, I, don't, I don't really need it. But there is a future plan to 3D print uh, an indexing ring that would glue on and slide over this uh, somewhere at that level to interface with the stock RPM sensor. When you are installing this, what you want to do is push back. Uh, once you get one of these screws started, let's go ahead and push while you turn the other. Right when you tighten it down. There we go. And there you go. Again, when it's all assembled, because we're not pulling on that spline shaft with this setup, remember the runout was less than probably half a thou when we started. And then uh, again, yep, same thing. Right on. Even if we spin it up, actually turn the motors off. There's 200 RPM. Then, yeah, it cranked this all the way up to 4,000. And it's quiet as a mouse. No rattle. I mean, that thing, it just runs super, super, super smooth. Cuts like hell, too. So, yeah. That'd be, uh... That'd be my version of the belt drive. Twenty five hundred. Thousand. So yep. Yeah, that's my version of the belt drive. Hopefully that uh that'll help you out. I might have these for sale soon on my website that I'm building. So keep me in mind, check back, and if you're truly interested, let me know in the comments. I'll be sure uh, to DM you and maybe we can work something out. Later. we